On the morning of July 9th, 2020, little Briasia Terrell woke up from her sleep thinking it was going to be like any other day that she had experienced in her short life. As a matter of fact, this was going to be an even better day because she was going to get to spend some time with her brother and spend the night with him, whose name was DL. Now, in order for her to do this, she would have to be looked after by Henry Dinkins. Henry Dinkins was the father of her brother and had previously had a relationship with her mother. So she thought that she was in safe hands. As we come to find out, Henry Dinkins ends up being responsible for her death. Before we get into that, welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Tim Solberg. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe down below. Let's continue to grow and let's leave a comment. Let me know if I missed anything or if there's any details that you would like to see added. I also don't mind hearing stuff about the channel as we wanna continuously improve and grow the community. So far, the community has been super awesome with leaving feedback and different perspectives on how cases go. So let's jump right into it. Henry Dinkins is supposed to be Little Briasia's guardian at this point. Now, we saw a lot of videos, and I'll add some in this one as well, where you see Henry Dinkins is the one that essentially knows that Briasia goes missing. What's up, Henry? So when was the last time you saw her? She was in the house. Yeah, when was the last time you saw her? 9.30. Last night? 9.30. Okay. 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 When was the last so, time you saw her? She was in the bed when I woke up in the morning. She was in the bed? Yeah. When you went to bed last night? Okay. Um, this is crazy, man. This yeah. is like, you know what I'm saying? I know she's hysterical, big brother. Yeah. D-I-N. K-I-N-S. Uh, your date of birth, Henry? August 2nd, 72. Is this your home address? No. What's your address? It's down by Ralston Carino. Just a guy, just... Yeah, I, I just know that. I you don't, don't know, know your I address? I don't know the full address. Do you know your phone number? Uh, hell no, I don't even know that either. I swear to God, I don't. Henry, you don't know where your daughter is, you don't know your address, and you no, don't no, know no, your no. phone no, number. No, no, for real, I'm finna so give it to you now. You think I'll be lying, but... Well, no, it's just... It's, it's kind of a, I don't I don't call myself. I know, but you gotta know your number. You gotta know your address. Who's, I don't. So this is your girlfriend's address here. This is good friend. Okay. Okay, here go my phone number here. I bet people uh, are uh, banging on it. Forty seventy eight. Forty seventy eight. Okay. What was she last wearing? In the bed. Uh, what you have on? Some shorts. What color? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't What's her height and weight, you think? She's a little taller than he is. She's just tall. Okay. She's a little taller than that. She's probably yeah. not like this here. Okay. What's her, what kind of, what's her hair look like? She has dreads. Same, same. Long. Dreads. Yep. Long. Long and dreads hair? Yep. Like shoulder length or Down. middle of the back? Down here. Okay. Mid-back, dreads. Right? Is that how we would yes. label that? Yes. Um, she had shorts on. Did she, had a, did she still have a white shirt on? She had that long, that she had the shirt that you gave her. The white shirt. White all white? white all white t-shirt, yep. And you guys don't have alarms or anything on your doors if the door is open? No. Okay. Uh, you should um, get one. You should get one. Too, too and... Late. Listen, I know this sounds dumb. I, I've lost my kids too. Right. Okay. Um, actually, mine just happened last week. And we went back in and we found them in the bedroom. No, we just searched. Okay. Just, just I, searched. I'm going to ask you to who, who have you called? Who, oh, what doors going. have you knocked on? I, I, I don't know these people out here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause, but I called her. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And she told me she was at work. At first, I was riding around looking. Yeah. And then, me and my son started riding around looking. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then, so, how long ago did you? Has it been an hour? It's been a couple hours. A couple hours? A couple hours. Okay. A couple hours. Um, have we called grandmas? Uh, have we called cousins? That's what, I, that's what I just asked. She, she the one. I don't know all that. She knows all that. She called, she called my grandma already. 
Okay. She knows all that, not me. Okay. Do we have a picture? She does. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She got the picture before. Who's the girl that lives here? Andrea. Andrea? Yeah. What's Andrea's last name? Culberson. Culberson. He need a picture of her. You don't have nothing with you right now. Okay, that's fine. Have we called um, family? I've called everybody. I have my uncle okay. out riding around. My mom's on her way out here. My we've been everywhere. We've here. been everywhere. Okay. And and she's she's gonna be with a friend inside some apartment. That's most why likely. I said I'm, I'm gonna still look. Okay. She would have never. She would, How many? She would have never. First she, of all, she would have never woke up at eight o'clock in the morning. And she would have I, never. What you mean? Eight o'clock in the I'm morning. I'm just saying. That, that ain't what she I said. I never said that. Guys, guys, this isn't the time to fight. Exactly. I don't give a f about you walking. Dude, you right. lost her though. How did you lose Because shit. you was watching her, Henry. What do you mean? But hey. I'm gone, sir. Come on, D. Listen to me. Well, you guys got to. You guys got to come together right now. This isn't a time to fight about it. Okay. Um, so, well, hey, if you, well, how am I supposed to, what, what do you want me to do? I got neighbors, I got neighbors. You see how she, she stepped on me. You know what I mean, me? like I'm, like I'm I got no picture. Listen, I got no, what listen, do you want me to do? What am I supposed to do? Right. You know what I'm I get All it. I do Henry, I get it. I get All it. I can do is look. I get it, Henry. What we come to find out is that Henry Dinkins does some weird stuff the morning that Briasia disappears. And we're going to talk about that timeline. As a matter of fact, if you listen to the court trial, we hear things like the car, the color of the car, his car gets stuck. He pays somebody $100 to help him get his car from being stuck out in Clinton, Iowa, right? Very close to where Briasia's body was found. Now, if you hear the defense, the defense talks a lot about the DNA wasn't recovered in the car. There was no bleach that was recovered, even though the prosecution has pointed out that Henry Dinkins goes in and buys two bottles of bleach in the Clinton Walmart. They find one bottle back at home and then they don't find the other bottle. However, they cannot say with definitively that there's bleach on the clothes or anywhere in Henry Dinkins' car. Now, what we do know about Henry Dinkins is that he is a registered sex offender. So, it leads you to believe that Henry Dinkins had something to do with Briasia Terrell's disappearance. As a matter of fact, when you hear closing arguments, you do hear the prosecution bring forward that Henry Dinkins, the theory is that he sexually assaulted Briasia, and then once he knew that she was gonna tell on him, he knew that he would have to murder her. Couple other things that we saw in the trial that was crazy. Keep in mind, this is a, quite a long trial. It's lasted a couple of weeks, and uh, there was a lot of stuff that came out. DL, who's a minor, so we have to use the initials, takes the stand. While they're on the stand, they point out that their dad, who is Henry Dinkins, shot Briasia, which is his sister. Now, with such detail as the gun was a silver gun, the prosecution goes on to prove that the gun was a stainless steel gun. They also come back and say like, look, most kids that age would think that a gun is black because most guns are black. So it'd be reasonable to believe that the gun in the case would have been black. So for DL to know these kind of details, he must have seen his sister get shot from Henry Dinkins. A couple other things that popped up, um, and we're gonna go into the timeline here in just a second, and I'll read out the timeline for you folks, is that Henry Dinkins had full access to Briasia. Henry Dinkins was said that he left the apartment several times. He did go to the gas station a few times. He shows up in Walmart and he is all over the place. So he has the time to commit the crimes. And two, if you look at his trail, it does not look good for him, right? Now, this trial went to a judge because they didn't think that a jury could be impartial. His attorney, Jeff Freeze, I'm sure advised him that this would be the best way to go, but ultimately it's up to Henry Dinkins and he chose to go for a bench trial. Ultimately, he's found guilty and he is never gonna see the light of day on the outside of bars and rightfully so, Briasia Terrell got her justice. All right, let's talk about the timeline in this one.
So sometime before 12 a.m., Andrea Culberson testified that when she fell asleep in the living room right before midnight, Dinkins was on the couch at the apartment at 2744 East 53rd Street, apartment 8, and Briasia and her brother DL were asleep in the bedroom. 2.13 a.m., a dark-colored sedan northbound on Schmidt Road past Jack's Brakes and Alignment at 2160 West River Drive. 2.29 a.m., headlights leaving the lot of 743 Schmidt Road, where the defendant's motorhome is parked. This is captured from Devon Self Storage Camera at 2070 West River Drive. 2.30 to 2.31 a.m., the dark-colored sedan southbound on Schmidt Road, and then returns northbound on Schmidt Road from Jack's brake camera. 2.49 a.m., dark-colored sedan leaving the lot of 743 Schmidt Road. 2.50 a.m., dark-colored sedan south on Schmidt Road. 2.51 a.m. to 2.53 a.m., vehicles enter Credit Island and leaves Credit Island, seen from a camera from a residence on River Drive. Approximately 3 a.m., Andrea Culberson testified she woke up and notices the defendant and Brasia are missing from the apartment. 3.11 a.m. and 3.12 a.m., Andrea tries to call the defendant and notices his phone was left in the apartment. Approximately 3.30 a.m., Andrea testifies that the defendant enters the apartment and retrieves an unknown item from the bedroom closet and leaves. Andrea looks out the window and sees Brasia standing outside of the Impala prior to the defendant leaving. 3.33 a.m. to 3.38 a.m., the defendant arrives at Quick Shop at 201 West 53rd Street in a maroon Impala. Henry purchases $35 of gasoline, two packs of cigarettes, and a lighter using cash. The defendant is seen leaving in the Impala traveling eastbound on West 53rd Street. Sometime before 5.55 a.m., the defendant returns to Andrea's apartment to pick up DL. 5.35 a.m., Culberson calls the defendant, which lasts for 39 seconds. Dinkin's cell phone records show him leaving the area of the apartment complex. 5.45, Maroon Impala westbound on East 53rd Street, past the Quick Star at 2050 East 53rd. 5.57 a.m., Maroon Impala northbound on the 6100 block of Eastern Avenue from the 6138 Jusden circle camera 559 maroon impala southbound on 5900 block of jersey ridge road seen from the 5915 woodland ave camera 601 the defendant calls andrea which lasts nine seconds the call places the defendant back at the apartment 605 maroon impala northbound on the 5900 block of jersey ridge road 611 maroon impala northbound on highway 61 from the mile marker 124 camera 643 maroon impala east toward clinton on highway 30 from pash farm which is 6441 lincoln way camera 649 maroon impala enters the walmart parking lot henry the defendant walks up to the doors the store doors don't open till 7 a.m dinkins gets back into the impala 6.54 a.m., Maroon Impala exits a lot. A front seat passenger believed to be DL is seen. 6.57, Maroon Impala re-enters parking lot. 6.58 to 7.10, Dinkins enters the Clinton Walmart and purchases two 81-ounce bottles of Clorox. He places the bleach into the trunk of the Impala and leaves Walmart. 7.02 to 7.03, Dinkins' cell phone pings off a tower in Clinton. 7.10, Maroon Impala westbound of the 2600 block Lincoln Way Highway 30 seen from the first Central State Bank camera. 715 Maroon Impala westbound on Lincoln Way Highway 30 seen from the Pash Farm camera. 726 Maroon Impala westbound on Highway 30 seen from DeWitt Travel Center camera. 752 Maroon Impala southbound on Highway 61 from mile marker 124 to 814 northbound on Concord Street and then eastbound on Rockingham Road, seen from High V3019 Rockingham Road, 815 Maroon Impala southbound on the 700 block of Schmidt Road, seen from the Purina plant cameras, 816 Maroon Impala southbound on Schmidt Road towards River Drive, captured from Jack's Brakes and Alignment, 818 to 822 Dark Color Sedan enters and exit Credit Island, cell data put the defendant's cell phone in that area, 822 Maroon Impala traveling northbound on Schmidt Road is seen by Jack's Brakes and Alignment Camera. 824 Maroon Impala in the lot of 743 Schmidt Road with the trunk open. Dinkins and DL are standing near the motorhome seen from the Devon Self Storage Camera. 826 to 827 the Maroon Impala is traveling northbound on Schmidt Road and then east on Rockingham Road from the Purina Cameras. 
826 to 827 Maroon Impala northbound on Schmidt Road, and then east on Rockingham Road, seen from the Purina cameras. Approximately 842, Dinkin meets with Briage's mother, Aisha Lankford, at the McDonald's at 733 East Kimberly Road. DL, who is with Dinkins, leaves with his mother. 933 Maroon Impala eastbound on West 53rd seen from the fire station number 8 camera. 1146 Maroon Impala southbound and 3700 block of Bridge Ave. Captured from Purier Law Firm at 3719 Bridge Ave, which is near the apartment complex of Dinkin's sister and mother. Noon, Dinkin arrives at the Davenport Police Station to be interviewed. So I know that was a lot from the timeline, but in order to put this case into perspective, you have to figure out why was Henry Dinkins traveling so much? Why was Briasia spotted outside the apartment at 3 a.m. getting ready to get into the car? And why did Henry Dinkins come back to pick up DL? Furthermore, after doing all the things that he did, traveling all the way out to Clinton by Comanche, back through the same way that he went out there, buying the bleach and dropping off DL with his mother sometime in the morning, and then ultimately ending up at the police station to report that Briasia was missing. If you do see some of the videos with the body cam, there's some weird things that are happening with the body cam. You know, Henry Dinkins walks away, he acts like he's huffing and puffing, talks about how responsible he was for Briasia, and that uh, he didn't know what happened to her, but it was his responsibility to be watching her. A lot of guilt is coming off from him at that point. As we already know, he has been found guilty, will spend the rest of his life in jail, and that guilt was because he was the one that committed the murder. Furthermore, you're going to have somebody like DL who is going to walk through this life knowing that he had saw his older sister being shot by his father, which is going to be pretty crazy. That is going to be something that he's never going to forget. But justice for Briasia has been served and Henry Dinkins should never pose a threat to anybody ever again in this lifetime. There was two reasons why this case was near and dear to me. One happened in the area that I happen to live in, and two, Briasia Terrell woke up on the morning of July 9th thinking that she was gonna have a great day and get to spend the night with her brother. She looked to the adult Henry Dinkins as her guardian for the night. That guardian ultimately is the one that took her life. That makes this story extra sad because Little kids should never have to worry about who their guardians are. That being said, I'm your host, Tim Solberg. I hope I earned your like, your subscribe, and your comments down below. I hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll talk to you all later.